Hey guys, Fox Rapier with a video that's going to discuss a hot and touchy subject, ELO Hell. More specifically, I want to share an alternate perspective for you guys to think about that should hopefully make it easier for you guys to not believe in ELO Hell and to improve your chances of winning games. So first and foremost, what is the definition of ELO Hell? Well, when most people talk about it, they're referring to a place where their teammates are preventing them from winning games for one reason or another. Now, I personally have a slightly different definition, which is the place where you are visibly better than anyone else, but not by a wide enough margin to carry them single-handedly. I've already done a video addressing that point and how you can improve to escape from that kind of ELO hell, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. But getting back to that first definition where you can't win because of your teammates, there are actually a fair amount of logical and statistical arguments against the existence of an ELO hell, but I can understand that it's hard to appreciate such things when you feel powerless and frustrated in your games. So instead of giving you arguments and data, I want to share a different perspective, a way you can be looking at things to soften your ELO hell woes. The basis of this perspective is that you should think of your allies and enemies as the same people or the same player base. Now I don't mean you should try and team kill your allies and that you should donate your blue buff over to the enemy mid laner. By saying your allies and enemies are the same people, I mean that anything you say about your allies, you can say about your enemies too. The reason for this starts the very moment you hit that play now button. By doing this you signify to the matchmaking wizard that you are ready and willing to play a game. This matchmaking wizard however is not searching for 4 allies and 5 enemies, he's simply searching for 9 other players. All of these players are more or less equal in their skill level and that skill level is more or less equal to you. An algorithm is then run to determine who goes on what team. The people on the enemy team could quite easily be on your team and vice versa, especially at the lower leagues where the concentration of players is much higher, so the ability to find people with the same skill level is a lot easier. This can be proven in situations where a player dodges a game. The people you had on your team initially might not be the same as the ones you have after the dodge, and instead you'll find those players on the enemy team once you get in game. So if you feel that your team is full of knobheads or leavers or ragers or baddies, then your enemies must be knobheads, leavers, ragers and baddies. After all, they come from the same stock. If you are adamant that it's still just your allies, then something must be happening during these games to warp your allies into all these negatives. And, if that's the case, you have to look for a common denominator in your games to blame. Unfortunately, the only one is you. Either that, or you're viewing your team with piss tinted glasses. If you can buy into this perspective however, it will help you in two major ways, both of which will help you improve as a player and therefore win more games. Firstly, you'll stop believing in ELO hell. This means you'll stop only seeing flaws in your allies and will instead shift focus onto yourself. Recognising your own mistakes is the first obvious step in correcting them and obviously therefore being a stronger player. And the second way it will help you is by gaining a new appreciation and awareness of your enemy's flaws. If your allies don't buy wards, nor will your enemies. If your allies have a habit of getting caught, so will your enemies, etc, etc. Exploiting these weaknesses is a key component to winning more games. I do want to say though that having this perspective won't make trolls, ragers, afks, etc just disappear. Bad games will still inevitably happen, but don't let them poison your entire experience. If you do struggle to stay calm and focused however, I've also done a video on how you can stop raging and keep calm and stuff like that in game, which may be of use to you. The link to that video will also be in the description. So I do hope you found this video useful because I strongly feel that by applying and believing in this perspective, you will become a much better player. I find it quite compelling and personally it helps me to keep my frustrations down as well. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video feel free to give it a thumbs up, you can leave a comment discussing this issue and I'll try to get around to answering some of those questions. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more educational league content with a bit of entertaining stuff on the side as well. You can also check out my other videos but most importantly guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.